we are unmuted and we are live and live and going to the cloud, I guess, from what I understand. So uh, this is the zoning citation hearings for Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. And uh, Mr. Hearing Officer, your show. Um, give me the first case. So I can oh, 32 Adams. I know, but you're going to give me. Oh, you want the whole thing so far? Okay, that's fine. I'll let you want to go through your. Uh... I was going to have, to have the name. Oh. I'm doing it for each person because they're not all here. Okay, there we go. Okay, Marcia. so you are. Marcia. Marcia Jordan. Yeah. Okay. I'm Gary Oberst. I'm your hearing officer today. On my right is John Hayducky, the deputy zoning inspector. In the gallery is Steve Kleppen. He's the director of planning and zoning. And you are name. Marcia Jordan. Okay. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Okay. We are underway. Okay. So what we have here, this is a very easy one. Um, I think the best way for this one here would be to see the uh, presentation here. This is a very straightforward one. So let me, sorry about that. How nice. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Share screen. I'm going to do 32 Adams. So the last time this one was uh, here in front of us was on March 24th, 2021. And uh, at that time, we continued it to uh, the 4th, 28th, April 28th hearing, but that was uh, postponed. Uh, there was a thousand dollar contingent fine placed, uh, and we must show progress by the that hearing. But that hearing was postponed, so here we are today. Mm -hmm. And basically, I think a photo was going to say a lot here. Uh, this is what it uh, looked like prior. We had a uh, unregistered vehicle here, which is in the front setback and uh, cannot be there, and. Then also an unregistered car here, which is makes two. We only have one. Though this one was probably it probably meets the setbacks and is in proper spot. Okay. So now we'll go to May fourth, okay. and we have registered car in the driveway. Okay. Another registered car in the driveway. Okay. And the only unregistered vehicle on the property is the one back here. Right. But as long as it's behind the house, which it is, the front line of the house, I should say, right. it meets setbacks, therefore it's in compliance. What about the cars parked in the driveway? Well, they are in the, they are in the driveway, and that is their legal access to their parking area. So I am not counting those as parking in the front setback because they have a garage right here. In theory, they can pull in, but at the same time, if there's a car in there, as long as it's in their legal driveway, Okay, so we know people have more than two cars. So you tell me we have no more violations. That is correct. Wow, very good. <laughs> Finally, thank God. Okay, so what did I? So we have more. Yeah. No more progress now. Only two. The room down is that the red. The other must be registered or moved. Contempt fine raised to a thousand dollars. Continued one month. So we have a thousand dollar fine pending here. Yes. That's today's decision form. Okay. Violation cure. It's a thousand dollar fine. You want to speak about that? <laughs> right now, I don't have not even a penny. But it really, if, if, if I had to pay, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, because you, you see just little by little, little by little, we get in the property in the, the way how you want. Okay, fine, I will drop the fine. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And God go and bless you. <laughs> just needed to hear you say something. Give me an excuse. Okay, fine, dropped. Uh, what are we at? Uh, uh, I say, uh, it's missed, what? yeah, file is missed and we'll close it administratively. So we'll be good. Dismissed. Okay, so you don't have to come back. You did your job, you did what you, we wanted, and so we're all set. Yeah, 
There we go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, there we go. So let's uh, we'll pause here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And for those of us following along at home, we are on to item number three, 61 Fairfield Avenue. Uh, we are skipping temporarily uh, number seven, uh, number two, which is number seven Thistle Road. Uh, they may attend today's hearing, so we're skipping that over as they are not here yet. So 61 Fairfield Avenue is where we're going next. Fair enough. All right, so here's what we have. 61 Fairfield. Okay, so 61 Fairfield Avenue. This one was last in front of us April 21st. And the previous decision was a uh, $1,000 assessed fine, $2,500 contingency fine, that the two commercial vehicles must remain off the property. Um, and as a matter of housekeeping, this was the notice for today's hearing for May 12th, 2021. And this is the constable's delivery uh, paperwork receipt. That's what I'm looking for. And so the what this used to be was, and I will get a quick photo here. And if anybody at home wishes to see this, I didn't put in the packet in this up for a hearing officer. But the violation used to be was a cherry picker and a small dump truck located at the rear of a detached garage for number 61 Fairfield. Um, and so prior to the 21st of April, or for our last hearing on this, prior to that, um, literally the day before, the vehicles were gone. Now uh, they could have been out for the day. They could have, there's a laundry list of things that could have, um, could have happened. So I would buy on May 4th, um, the only thing about this area of Fairfield Avenue, it's uh, by the corner of, um, of Cedar Street. Um, it is an absolute zoo to pull over and try and uh, snap a photo. I drove by, there was no truck, no trucks, I should say. And then here on May 10th, it was a little lighter, the same condition as it was on the 4th and on the 20th of April. So, my only concern with this one is this is a repeat. Uh, this one we assessed a fine a few years ago for the same exact uh, matter, same exact truck to be uh, to be honest. Um, so, uh, you know, the contingency fine said that it, it, as long as it remained gone, I, I haven't seen it since. Um, we do a thousand dollar assessed fine. So at this point, um, you know, I think we would have to say, you know, we could monitor it. On my end, if it comes back, I can put it, easily put it back on the agenda. So now it's just a matter of we want to at least remove it from the process for now. It'd be a matter of the well, fine. Apparently, they did what they had to do. So yeah, I would, I would stretch to say that. Yeah. Seems back. Okay. And uh, where did I stop? So what do we say dismiss? Um, you want me to say here? In this case, yeah, um, file. Dismissed, I guess, is the way that's what I was dismissed. But monitoring will continue. Yeah, monitor will continue. Yeah. But I know it's not. Uh, yeah, if I see it again, I'll 
obviously uh, bring it right back. And I got the option to, I could actually, because we made this ruling today, now it's, it's considered been acted upon by the hearing officer, so I don't even need to send them a notice. I can send them directly to the citation. Okay. Now, state statute allows. So I don't know if I knew that he had paid a fine once before. No, relevant. Well, that was. I mean, I, if he came back next week, and I would remember that. I would, yeah. Well, no, no. The, the, the first mind. fine that he that he paid was under. Um, Attorney Bar Rulo when he was the hearing officer. Right. But had I known that, I might have acted differently. I think I think we did present that. Okay, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I think we did at the very beginning because I that's why I have it believe as my opening. Yeah, okay, good. My opening paperwork. Oh, excellent. All right. Okay. So oh, that's so that is 61 Fairfield. Uh, let me do this. Can I uh Steve may have to help me out here. We, if you want her to just to see who she's here for, you could ask her. She, yeah. So, uh, 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 I already ruled that she's oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Donna, are you there? Can you hear me? She just got it on mute or something. I mean, she might not be on there if the item she's waiting for is. Uh, you can just say if you. If she wishes to speak, just have her raise her hand. Okay, yeah, Donna. If you ever want, if you want to speak, uh, just uh, raise your hand on the uh, Zoom page there on the main screen, and uh, we'll get a uh, we'll get you in. All right. All right. So for now, we'll pause. Okay, everybody, we are back. So. Um, we are actually going to skip ahead real quick uh, to hopefully take care of some quick ones here that we know folks aren't showing up for, um, as uh, nobody is here yet for any of the other items which uh, we are anticipating somebody coming for. So we are going to do uh, items 5, 6, and 7, uh, 93, 99, and 109 New Canaan, and um, we will uh, do those as one presentation, however we will do uh, obviously, uh, three separate uh, decisions and rulings. Okay, so let's do our share screen. Right here. So let's uh, get, try and get rid of this here. Okay. And let's go to. Oh, here we go. 93 New K. Perfect. Okay. So 93, 99, and 109 New Canaan uh, came in as a set of complaints regarding uh, illegal signage. Uh, so I'll put, up, I'll put the first one, 93 New Canaan, uh, on the screen here. Uh, this is a very similar, this is extreme. WAPI. Where's Michigan Black? Oh, that's the um, customer service. That's their code, customer service. So this is a this is CityWorks customer service page. Uh, okay. um, we've had a few of these before, um, but because the reason this is this doesn't have a name or anything on it initially, this originally went to the Blight Office. Okay. And the Blight Office, um, long story short, they only have jurisdiction in the public domain when it comes to signage. And then on the private domain is us. Okay. So he took the, our flight officer took care of the stuff that was along the street and in the you know sidewalk. And so he passed the rest on to us. Uh, so this is the initial complaint for 93 New Canaan, uh, illegal signs hanging from building. Uh, and so as a, just a very quick matter of housekeeping for this one, um, this is a separate parcel, you know, make sure we do things right. This is uh, the owner, Mr. Sandolo. That's the tax form. And you see on the tax form, first one, 93 New Canaan Avenue. And scroll down. Here's the notice of violation we sent on March, March 23rd. 
and this is the return receipt and the good old fashioned uh, that's the COVID. So I'll give you guys why I kept going with it even after that. Um, so the citation sent on May 12th, very recently. And the return receipt is signed by Mr. Kendall. Okay. So that was the biggest reason why. But another reason I can also present is that um, the tenant in question, uh, the computer repair shop, the uh, provider contacted me to say, well, you know, what's my violation? So he wouldn't call me unless uh, somebody told him. Well, okay. uh, so we have, so the first photo, as you can tell, there are banners and we have one, two banners hanging off the deck. This is a mixed use building, there's apartments above. Uh, so they were hanging banners and signage off the deck and also uh, putting temporary signage in the windows, which to an extent is allowed, but not to what they were, to what they were doing. And so we'll keep going here. April 28th, this is after I, con I had a phone conversation with the proprietor with the owner of the business, and they went and took down a lot. <laughs> they even took down the signs that was legal. Okay. On top which they didn't have to do. The problem lies in they still have two issues in this photo. Uh, this pennant flag here, these are illegal in Norwalk. I'm really go over. And if somebody complains, I go after them. It'd be a full time job just to go after those okay. solo. Uh, I got to draw the line somewhere. And also, still has temporary signage in the windows, one on the bottom here towards the door. So you didn't talk to them and tell them what? Could be then. We'll oh, that, that's what, that's all we discussed. Okay, so why did he take down the stuff he had that didn't happen? I think he just panicked. I think. Okay. So uh, that that does happen from time to time. People are actually scared of me every now and again. Sure. Um, so based on that and the follow up inspection, one more done on the 29th, with it was the next day, but it's just nothing changed. Um, sent the citation and went by on. Uh, on the 4th, May 4th, they didn't snag a photo. Um, but the problem is they did take away that big banner. That's gone, I can <laughs> verify that. However, their issue is still, the no walk zoning regulations allow for, you could put little words in the windows for signage, but it can only be 25% of the window. Oh. So I, I just look at simply this one right here. That's too much. Okay. So I don't know if it's just the fact that they still don't understand what's going on, but I haven't heard anything since that initial contact. Um, and so in this case, you know, it would just be a matter of they got to reduce this and they're, they'd be in compliance. Um, I don't have Mr. Sandolo's contact information. I haven't heard from him. Uh, so you know, if I can get a hold of the, uh, yeah, if it's okay with the hearing officer, I'm going to try, I'll reach out to the um, proprietor again and say, hey, look, here, here's the real, what's, I give you one more shot at this. Here's what you need to do. Spell it out for him one more time. But that's the owner. This is the tenant. That's about it. This is about it. Correct. But it falls on the owner. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Saying, but you're talking to the tenant. Tenant, right, exactly. It seems like you just may not quite understand. Yeah, quite right. oh. Wait, John, we're just going to pause this real quick. Gotta pause that, stop share. Okay. All right, we're back at it. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't have a problem with you reaching out to the owner, but I think you're the. Well, no, reaching out to the tenant. That's the only one I've been oh, in the tenant, yeah. That's the only one I've been in contact with that one time. Okay, well. So I'll try and clearly uh, he's been told don't you know, I'm gonna throw you out if you don't comply. Right. So let's just get him in compliance. Doesn't seem like it's hard to do, and it seems like he's trying. Right. I think he made a very a haphazard attempt and it just didn't yeah, he kind of swung and missed a little I mean, bit. I don't know if I but you mean I understand. Right. Because you know, you're hard to understand. I am all right, I just don't understand at times. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the interpretation of that. 
Okay, so I'm going to say, yeah, let's see. There is a violation. We can't get around that. Right. Violation found. But mostly peculiar. Let's just continue it. Oh. We have hearings scheduled for the 2nd, the 9th, and the 23rd of June. What's today? What's... Today is the 12th. So, so June 9th would be a month, right? Uh, that would be four weeks. Yeah, that would be four weeks. At all. Yeah. Either one, the second or ninth would be fine. I wish I, he should be able to get it together by either one of those. Yeah, but if I give him a month, he can't come home. Is there no excuse? Right. That's a good point. 2269, no fine at this time. All right. Yeah, that, that works for me. And I'll reach out to the, uh, I mean, even if I have to stop by and knock on the door, I'll yeah, that's pay him a visit. Okay, so that was 93 New Canaan, and uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are on to three Bob White, those of us following along at home, as item number four on the agenda. Mr. Hearing Officer, take it away. I'm Gary Obers. I'm the hearing officer for the day. To my right is John Hayducky, who is the deputy zoning inspector. And in the audience, there is Steve Kleppen, director of planning and zoning. And we have one person. Hey. <laughs> you want to get invited back? <laughs> Please, send me home. <laughs> All right, so John will present the city's findings, and you'll have an opportunity to be heard, and then I'll hear any interested party. And then we'll see if we can come to a resolution. Uh, Raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So let's go to everybody's favorite, the share screen, and we'll bring up. Uh, oh, not my email. We don't want to bring up my email. I don't, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. No, nobody that. wants to see that. I don't want to see that. Uh, let's see here. All right. So three bottom right, right there. All right. So. Um, we're going to start with, uh, we got received a complaint about a trailer that was placed on the property, uh, too close to the property lines, possibly being used for either commercial purposes or for, uh, permanent residence. That was the initial complaint. That the complaint? Well, yes and no. Okay. The complaint came in. <laughs> Sorry, a, yes. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> came in, uh, over the phone to me. Okay. And in my research, I saw that we had an active complaint already uh, for another issue, which uh, I can I will discuss with the uh, property owners. Uh, let's say after this, the garage. Uh, oh, yeah. So, um, so but based on I see if we had an open file, we can pursue investigation because it's already open. Okay, but we already have not, an active file on the property. That is not in front of us. That's just yeah. how it has got initiated. Okay. Uh, so, and this is just the proof to show that we had an active file back from 2019. Okay. Uh, so, and a little bit of housekeeping. So, Marlene is the owner of the property. She is here today, and that's the tax form. We have our notice of violation here, sent to the owner of record. And we'll keep scrolling down here. YouTube. Oops, actually, sorry, I'm a little out of order. My apologies. I'm going to scroll down a little bit again just so I can get the uh, green card here. Oop. There it is. All right. That's the certain mail return receipt for the notice of violation. And this was the December. Yep. This was the response from the notice violation from the uh, property owner. We basically keep these, as you know, for proof that they received. You know, if they reached out, so therefore we know they received it. Um, and so you can read 
that there. I'm just going to keep going through so we can get our housekeeping here done. This was also my response to that email. And this was another correspondence to show that we were still still on this. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to put it on the side. There we go. A little bit more of a lengthier one there, but uh, it's a, uh, uh, you can read that if you, if you wish. And so that was the notice of violation there, which I put in the wrong place, my apologies. This is the citation we sent. Oh, okay. Citation, and per usual, this is Constable Bondi's Service received. So this one here, this so upon inspect initial inspection, we found that the trailer there was indeed a trailer on the property, which is um, which we had no way with no survey map or anything of that nature. Um, we're not able to confirm whether it complied with setbacks or things of that nature. Of, um, placement on the property. Uh, in this zone, it needs to be 10 feet off the side property line, 10 feet off the rear property line, 70 feet from the front property line. There you go. So it's not, it's not there. It's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll move the mouse around a little more. Yeah. Sorry about that. How are we still in place? Everything's white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So uh, and I also did an inspection uh, and that was the February 11th email you saw there uh, at the property. Uh, my lady was kind enough to meet me out there. I uh, did uh, look through the trailer. Uh, there was no evidence of full habitation or commercial business. It's your typical camping trailer. Uh, but we still had the problem. I still was unable to verify the setbacks on it because I don't have a map. I was <laughs> not surveyor. So, um, so that is something we needed to confirm. And also um, needed to also make sure Marlene was aware that you know, while I don't have any, didn't have any evidence of a commercial operation, that that was mentioned in the um, initial complaint. And uh, the owner, Marlene, is, uh, is a dog room. We're very good one from what I hear. And uh, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, there was no commercial activity that I could easily see from the from the uh, trailer, and there there was not. Uh, now there is a little bit in the uh, you know there's some dog grooming care items in the house, and um, but that is we haven't had anything I could document that would be the commercial scale. So the problem that we are looking at today is that I still do not have um, any. Yeah, any valid proof that this is, meets the setback. Uh, it very well could. I'm always open to that. Just with any other placement of uh, vehicles or anything like that on, on a property. Uh, but so that is what I would need for this is something to validate that it meets setbacks. And then I'm also looking to um, keep in order to get the validation. I am also looking for an extension for that. And I'm also looking for an extension just to make sure there's no commercial activity going on. That makes any sense. What I'm hearing is you know of no violation. Well, this I would say that this would be a violation because I my interpretation is that the vehicle is within the front 70 feet. You're saying you have no evidence. Well, it's right. That's true. We don't have a survey. Just know where that is. You have to. This is your burden, right there. Well, I, I, that's right, and that's why because the front setback for the house is in a zone, forty feet. Uh -huh. So, using that, that this is where the front setback, the building setback, uh -huh. the house is. The garage isn't thirty feet long. Okay, show me that. Like that doesn't. You're showing me a picture and saying it's not 30 feet long. It's not really. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> Preponderance of the evidence, you know. No, I, I understand. I totally understand that. I just, I would, I would not uh, take measurement of the garage because I've honestly felt that, that was definitely not a. Uh, because if this is the forty foot front setback, it's not. I know what you're saying. I, I understand. And the logic yeah. is there, but it's not what I would call enough evidence to show me that they are in violation. Give me something more concrete. Oh, uh, I could or gravel, whatever. You want. Uh, what I could do, I could say that this is. I could bring up our GIS real quick, okay. and I could do that. That we've done this before as well. Yeah. So I will stop the share screen for one moment here so I can open up the internet browser and I'll watch the website and uh, Take a second. There we go. Yeah, it's impressive. When it, when it works properly. Could be less time than it would take you to go get the map. Well, I can't make a map. No, <laughs> I actually make one. I was going to say, well, I don't have one. I don't have one. I'm trying to go get it. Yeah. It will take longer than that. That's there. There we go. So I'm going to uh, let's take the 2019 aerial. We'll get that. One. So this is three bob white right here. Oh my gosh. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Careful what you do when you're in your backyard. <laughs> True. True. So let's get the measuring device out here. So here's the trailer right now. You can actually see it. If I go in too close, it's going to get pixelated. We're all going to see some stuff. So we want to do that. Fine. Okay. So we got from here. So it was estimated as a front property line. I'll even give it a little bit. There we go. 66, if I'm reading that properly. That's there it right. is, 60, 66 feet. So it's not the road, right? So it's not like the line of the road, it's that black line. Yes, it, the, the line Got of the it. street may not be your property line. It's a lot, it's a misconception a lot of folks gotcha. in town that the, the street may not be the end of the quote unquote right of way. So that little bit that's on the edge of each, each side of the pavement is for if they wanted to redo the storm system, the storm drain system, or putting <laughs> sidewalks or something of that nature. Gosh, yeah. So they they don't have to go buy your land. <laughs> they already have it. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, so there we go. Isn't okay. that so great? Now you have. Now I have it. There we go. Now I have something there. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. So that is the main. That is the issue there. Okay, so we got a violation because yeah. we got a trail where it doesn't belong. Right. Okay. And so yep, and, and, and so I think um, that is the just as the I do was not able to confirm any commercial anything out, outside of it. And if there was living quarters in there, um, I well, you can't strike it. I don't know exactly. So I've got a trailer that has to get moved. That's what that's all we have here. Right. Okay. We got to move five feet, right? Can you move? Uh, yep. Yeah, God, you can. Yeah, it'd be about five feet. So if you want, to, because Got it. again, we don't have a survey. So if you want to move to, you know, a little farther just to make sure, sure on that, maybe make it, you know, somewhere between five to 10 feet just to make sure that it is in that setback. It's not in that setback. That's gotcha. that fine. Let me just gotcha. confirm. Do you have any objection to any of this evidence that Mr. Hidaki presented? No. Right, so we're in agreement. You've got to move that trailer. What? How much time do you need to do it? Um, it's it's like a it's it's really difficult to move. Actually, we have to we have to get a truck, and then um, last time we it took us quite a while to get back there. We have to like get permission from the from the 
the senior citizens home like behind us to get it to open up that area to get back there right um i'm not i'm i'm not sure how much time do you think we need to move the trailer to move it because the the thing is if if we need to move from like five, how, ten, five, five, ten feet, five, five ten, ten feet, feet we can do something like in the same way if we need to move to that place to another one is the problem for like it can like so it can it can sit where it's at but just a little more right yeah so basically you're just moving it yeah from. straight backwards yeah straight yeah, yeah. back farther into the backyard yeah like like so like where it is from the property line on the left side is fine right like 20 20 feet it's from got, yeah it's got to be 10 that's the that's, that's the it so yeah cool really quick we'll go back to the uh i go back to the let me spare over chair screen go back to here so yeah so if we do this the measuring tool again here it'll come down so if this is the corner of the trailer here the property line yeah you have even if i'm just cool. a touch off it's 20 feet cool. so cool. you don't need to be 10. okay yeah oh yeah so we just have it just has to move back like, like a little bit 10 feet. Right. so how much time do you think we need for that let me i ask one question sure. yeah because sure. when when we mesh um, from mama, here mama, to here mother, mother, what? La linea negra. what's line sorry one second <laughs> okay go ahead you can do yeah. it Mom, this look at the street oh okay. that's the house Look, this is our line. Huh? This is our property line. This black line. Right? This yeah. does not oh, belong to us. Okay, now I know okay. what's <laughs> because we, we, my husband and I we miss from the corner. The, from the corner. <laughs> yeah. And from here, that's eighty. And I say, why is the yeah, okay. no, that's now? All right, mm -hmm. that's so we'll get rid of this. now. I know. Back. So oh. how much? Like, I think so. If we need to move to front, two, two weeks. Two no. Yeah, two fifty. This weekend, longer. With this weekend, we can we do. Yeah, could you do fourteen days? Yeah, that would be. I'm asking you how much time you need. You said last time it took quite a bit of time. I don't know. What, I think. Quite, I think quite a bit means. Yeah, like a, if we don't have to get like I mean, we could definitely haul it. I think two weeks is enough time. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Two. Yeah, to be more. The end of the so, week. yeah so that would be. I'm going to give you a month. Okay. Oh, Thank you very much. Okay. Well, actually, you let much. me. Uh, let me see. Let me just make sure you're, uh, Donna is, are you here for this, uh, item? Everything to say? Can you hear me? That's another, <laughs> and I got the mic right there. So I don't know if, uh, it, it should be okay. Well, I'll just, no, all right. I, I'm just asking her for every time, every, for every item. See if she wants to hear more. Yeah. It's okay. Fair enough. Okay. No. Okay, violation found. No fine at this time. Continued to what's the date? Uh, let's see. So we do that. That would be the ninth, would be the closest meeting we have to a month. It's a little less. Nine, 21, four. Sure, sure, sure. That's it. Uh, contingent thousand dollars is not cheap. That's fair. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. We had a month. <laughs> oral, oral notice. You're being you're being told of the date right now. We're not going to send you a green card. No problem. No problem. Save one way. Thank you, Betty. Okay. All right, so we will pause this. So that was three bob lights. All right, everybody, we're back. Uh, for those of us following along at home, we are going to be going to uh, 99 New Canaan. That is item number six. So, uh, oof. all right. This one's going to be my most uh, ambitious presentation I've ever done. So. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm gonna sit back and relax. I think so. This is gonna be very this is gonna be you might want to get your popcorn ready, folks. All right, so for sake of housekeeping, we have the complaint complaints. So we have 
99 New Canyon Avenue, Broad River Wine and Spirits. We have Jet Variety. And King Audio Installation, King Car Audio Installation, I should say. That's the third one. So I'll consolidate the housekeeping here. Um, the owner of the entire plaza, 99 New Canaan Avenue LLC out of New Canaan. That is the tax uh, tax form. And here's the initial notice of violation. And that was there. Bingo. And the next we have is the uh, return green card. Now it's our favorite, COVID. But uh, as you know, I wouldn't have it here unless uh, right. unless I had a reason. I've learned. I've learned my lesson. I've gotten. I got beaten up enough. That's the citation. Now, if you notice from the first uh, from the first notice, it went from a long list up here to on the bottom of this one. Sorry, just the three we're looking at. Right. Okay. And I'll explain that in uh, in a moment. Okay. Now, here you think I'm crazy. Another C19, another COVID confirmation. Uh -huh. And we couldn't send uh, Constable Bonnie on this one because it's out of town and out of his jurisdiction. Right. So why are we here with it? The owner reached out to me. Uh -huh. So, um, that's why we're here. We're going to be here. I recognize the name of the uh, owner. Mm -hmm. That Mr. Pasquale, he owns a, owns a few properties now. Um, Okay, this was May 4th, okay? Yep. So now we'll get some of the evidence and- What happened to the meeting? I called him. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting over the phone. Okay. Um, so for your convenience, Mr. Hearing Officer, I have packets of pictures for all three. So we have King Car Audio, Jet Variety, and Broad River. So here's, I'll go through each, each picture here. So initial inspection, March 4th on these uh, locations. So first is Broad River. Uh, they had their garage door over because that's a package for the electric security. Uh, however, being that they can only cover 25% of the window with their advertising and signage, um, this here, the signage went down to the ground and I can, I got a picture of that. Uh, but even being that high all the way to the ground, that's definitely over 25%. And here's a picture from Street View is the next, this is from Google Street View. And you can just tell their signage all the way up to basically the top of the restaurant. Um, okay. So that is uh, without breaking out a measuring stick, that's no, definitely okay. that's okay. Yeah, that's uh, and then um, so then the next item I have in there is the email exchange um, with the tenant. So that means if you notice the date April first, uh, somebody received my notice of violation. So I guess it was the owner who passed it down to the tenant. And so I met um, VJ out there at the property. This is, is uh, my response to him there. Uh, so I went out there and met, met with him to explain the situation rather than just also an email. Mm -hmm. And um, he was actually very willing to, um, he was very willing to be in compliance. However, when I went out there, uh, as a follow-up, 
before I sent the citation, there was still an issue, and I have the picture right here. This guy right here, still pretty large sign. So what I went out there again on May 10th, and there's a photo in there from May 10th. I believe there should be in there. The last one. So the reason I took this long shot for a picture is this is actually all one window. Okay. This is a false frame. So he gets to use the area of the entire right. window pane. Okay. And also, he brought up in one of his emails, or I believe it was the first one, because he's a package store, they have the registers, I did not know this, have to be concealed from the outside. Okay. This is to prevent robbery. So I'm giving him, and this is a, um, I'll be completely honest, this is a deputy zoning inspector um, interpretation. I'm, his register is right here. Okay. So I am letting him keep that right. sign at that size. Even though if somebody did a hardcore measurement on it, it may come out to be over 25%. If it ever came to that extreme, I would have him take away one of these. Okay. So um, based on the security issues, I'm letting him keep that because he made an effort and took down the rest of the signage. So uh, that is, so now that's the presentation for Broad River Wine Spirits. Okay. Now, so if we don't mind, we'll move on to Jet Variety. Okay. These guys have been here for 30 years. Yeah, I don't know that, I mean. yeah, they've been here for a long time. So first of all, on March 4th, um, they litany of issues. Um, so first they wrapped a pole with a banner. Uh -huh. That's not a banners, as we learned before, are not allowed. Uh -huh. And also they had the animated flashing lights here. Uh -huh. Shockingly, those are not allowed either. So you can walk. They can be solid. So you can have the same color. I noticed one of these committees to make sense of this. Oh, uh, they're about probably 30 years ago when these things yeah, <laughs> ain't so nobody's right. ever been. Right. And also the other problem that they had was there was a sign up here that's a changeable copy sign. So basically it's the electronic so signs the sign? up here in the corner okay. next to the ATM sign. I see. Okay. So these are a, um, these are a, those aren't allowed either because they flash and they're animated and they change every six seconds or whatever. Not my rule. Oh, it is my rule, but not my <laughs> Christmas, I guess. So, uh, and then also as a, as a cherry on top, uh, they had one of these pennant flags. Uh -huh. I think it was on the public right of way. It may not be though. It's kind of behind the bushes. They, can't have it they couldn't have it. It would either be us taking it down or blight off the thing. So I just included it just to, okay. you know, just to be careful. So and then there's the Google Street View again. It's the next, um, and you can see it's covered. Um, yeah, you know, 25%. That's the, that's a good shot at it, I think. And so I have an email here from Friday, uh, April 2nd, uh, from the owner, Shiraz, um, the operator, I should say. And um, so at his request, I actually did go out there. I think I actually went out there uh, the following Monday, uh, explained to what needs to be taken down and all that. And uh, very agreeable. And my response is the excellent, very worthy response, I understand. But, um, And there, so there is a, a niche to temporary signage, and if you really want to like get into it, but just trust me, it's he's he's fine without it. I explained it to him just in case he wanted to utilize it. Um, so that went back on after we had our conversation on April 29th, and everything was gone, with the exception of the changeable copy sign that was still in the window. So that had to be removed. It wasn't. That triggered the citation. Huh. Okay. Um, I think I have one from May 
attempt there. That's just a wider shot. And you see, he made a good effort to, yeah. to get rid of everything there. Oh, this is May 10th. My apologies. So this is, he did get rid of the changeable copy sign. Oh. Um, it's not, he replaced it with the ATM sign. Uh, signage such as ATMs, open, things like that. Those are exempt from the help guide. Um, mm -hmm. They were, they're exempt. So they can have an open sign, they can have an ATM sign. Um, basically informational, not advertising. Okay. So, the, so he's fine with having that there in the open sign up here. And last but not least. So he's basically cured. He is cured, yes, he is cured. This. And that's this King, King Car Audio. Yeah, that's, right that's uh yeah. So King Car Audio, the first picture there, that speaks volumes. That giant banner, not not allowed. Too bad. Uh, it's you know, if I wanted a remote car starter and drove by and saw that, if I didn't see that, I probably would not we'll drive by. Oh, you'll see how and you see how it affects the front end. You'll see okay. in pictures. You'll see it's not. And then also, this was in the front of the in those bushes as well. Sandwich board sign. Okay. I'll have my copy of that. Okay. Um, so, and then watch, rinse, and repeat. So on the twenty eighth, they got rid of the banners. On the side, one and on the side there, but they still had signage in the corner. Oh, wait. Um, in the corner here, more than twenty-five percent of the window. Mm -hmm. So that's still an issue. And there's also additional signage on this uh, the photo from the 29th in the other. Frame, other window frame. Now this, for some, this, this here in the Dunkin' Donuts, those are solid frames. I went out there, I was like, those are actually two different paints. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know why. The actually, I never, I didn't look at Jeff Ryan's, but for some reason, um, hmm. you know, it might be for security reasons. One paint on the liquor store, you know, the chances of something going through it is slimmer than a smaller frame. It's a stronger, more surface area. Right. So um, that's just a guess. Okay. So that's what triggered the citation. So I sent the citation and I got a response from the provider, from the operator, for me to go out again. So I went the same day I went to, yep, got it. Okay. So I went out the same day I went out for the other two. Yeah. Um, and I got a nice close. Oh, this is what he sent me. This is what it was at night. Okay. This is much better. Uh -huh. Now, the only thing is this here, if this was lit, uh -huh. unfortunately, it probably would count. Really count. Because it would be down to here. And he already has this sign here. So it's probably over 25%. Right, but it's not lit. But it's not lit at the moment. So at that time, and next page, the next photo from the 10th, it's not lit in that one either. Oh, the only thing I have to stress is very, well, it's just flip a switch. No, it doesn't. So, um, but in my photos and documentation, he said, yeah, we're, we're you know, he's like, he promised if they have it on, it's only going to be one or the other. So I'm like, okay, well. So, but he can do that. Yeah, he can do one or the other. Yeah, as long as not both on at the same time, well, then he's fine. Okay. So basically, this here, the two, the Jeff Variety and the Wine and Spirit shop, they're done. They're okay with zone. They're okay with me. I just want to make sure that the car installer doesn't put both of them on. And the thing, the the, the things with this, uh, as you know, and I'm, I'm sure much to your uh, you know, chagrin at times, uh, this was not done in house. So we actually got a complaint. We got complaints on this and um, several dozen more. Um, so I kind of have to be somewhat enforcing on this because it will be. It seems like you enforced it. Well, yeah. I, I, the reason why with that, I'm just, my suggestion like is one guy. to so keep it open just so I can. One issue with. And we don't even have to, we don't, it'd be one of those things that if it stays off, I'll just close it administratively. Okay. One of those deals. 
right. I just didn't want to get them off the hook totally this week, just to make sure that they understand we, we will be watching. Okay. We can phrase that however. So that's the better way to do it. Yeah, just the yeah. complainers got their cure. They got, yeah, I mean, yeah. percentage wise, they got 90%, 95% of the cure. So actually, they got 100% as far as we know. As far as we know, right. Like anybody. Uh, well, that's why, it, 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 just because it's so easy doesn't mean he's going to do it. Well, I understand. Yeah, that's the, that's a very judicial uh, way of looking at it. It's very honest with it. Yeah, if you want to keep it open on a problem, I put it. As far as I'm concerned, it's cured. And that's it. We can also, and this is another thing I, I, I will uh, well, remind you. always keep looking at it. Well, yeah. And, I don't mind keeping it open for a while while you look. Yeah, no, or what we could or do, just monitor. we can use the um, the line of, and this is simply my suggestion, because this has now been brought in front of you, let's say we do opt to close it totally. If, for example, that comes on, both of them are on one time, and I notice that, I don't have to send them a notice. I can bring them right back to you. Okay. So okay. It, it's one of those in the, the state statute it, it is explicit. It says within 12 months of being presided on by the hearing officer. Okay. So if this comes back on in June, I can bring them right back. Don't even have to do a notice. I just have to send Peter after him. I can't send Peter after him, but send them citation. Okay. So, so we can we can do that's always an option too. I would like to say in the decision, all the signs can't be on at the same time. The first put in front of his face. Yeah. So it would be you just put uh King uh King Car Audio is what it's called. So this is the decision for all of them. All of them, correct. That's and that was the only rub with all this is just that it's the same property, but three different tenants were brought in. Yeah, but the owner's got the problem. You're right, exactly. Okay. All violations cured. Which one is this? The one, the King Car Audio. King Car Audio. And only one. That's, I guess, a neon sign, I think, is what it is. Yeah. It is just neon. Yeah, it's a neon sign. Neon sign. One at a time. This one's on the record. Right. Uh, no fines assessed. Are you going to just close the file? Yeah. You can say you filed this much as, as before. Okay. And uh, if you want to make the note, like per state statute, can be brought back to hearing officer at discretion or how they want to phrase it. Uh, Just so that they're aware that if, if we do yeah, catch it, that it'll come back real quick. Yeah. If further violation, if, if, um, Violation, you say reappears. Violation recurs. Recurs, that, there we go. Recurs. Statute permits direct citation. Okay. So there's nothing that's a. Uh, that's good. That's that's a that's a know what's going to happen, right? And it's also one to the others as well yeah. because they yeah. cleaned up for a couple of weeks there. They have to stay that way. Okay, that's good. That's that's not bad as well. no, no. That's uh, I said after the hearing, I'll give you a short brief on how this all started, which is actually quite humorous. I just don't want to put it on record. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, that's it. Thank you. Um, you know, let's just move on to 109 New Canaan. Um, that's the second page. I thought we had three. One, yeah, we had three addresses. Oh, one of the addresses had three. Oh, okay. I, well, I had I, three tenants and I three issues. I, was, I got it. No, no, it's just different. Okay, so this is a whole different one. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. 109 new paint. That's the mail type of no, you want to think you know what's coming. Uh, 
Okay, so we have, and we go to everybody's favorite. Oh, come on now. I hate that it does that drop down. Get that out of there. There we go. So we have housekeeping. That's the initial complaint. Uh, looks very familiar. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one is for Super 7 Food Mart. Yeah. So that's the complaint. This is the tax form. And it is New Canaan Avenue Condo, whatever that is. Uh, 109 out of, uh, this, is a, this one's actually a normal. And that's the notice of violation. And there we are on the screen. Again, another COVID, uh, COVID deal there. They're not, they're, live. they're not even signing them anymore. Right. Uh, it's getting bad. Like, at least give me something that I can, if I ever had to throw in front of a judge, it's, it's, give me something. I'm not going to put COVID-19 in front of a judge anyways. I would, yeah, there's no, yeah. So that's the citation. Um, and yeah, just for temporary, just like the last one, temporary signage. Now we did get some sort of signature on that one. Huh. The hell if I knew what it was. But then again, I don't know who the condo owner is either. Okay. It's a, you know, there's no principal by the looks of it. There's nothing late. There's nothing in uh, Concord. So definitely didn't say it's a an LLC or no. Not. My guess is there's a escrow. It'll say it, on, it says on the tax sheet actually if it's an escrow. Um, so it's an automatic payment to the tax department, so they don't care where the hell the bill goes, as long as you're getting paid. That's real. No, it's not escrow. So they're getting, they're sending it to that address and they're getting paid. So, <laughs> the end of the day, that's all the city cares about. <laughs> yeah, no, I so, but again, I wouldn't bring it here unless I had something. So Let's see what you got. That's an email from the operator. Got a letter. Business. Okay, so somebody had to withhold them again because I don't, I didn't reach out to the businesses right, so specifically. All right, so and I've got at least a card with some scribble on it. Right. You can always tell me later that that's, that's not, they want to rehear and fine. Uh, so there's the packet. So March 4th. Yeah, you can tell the windows are preloaded. Mm -hmm. Um, and they also have two banners uh, up on the roof there. One of them, the milk banner, seems to have been there pretty uh, pretty long. Um, so let's go down here. So I'll go April 15th is an exit. A lot of the same. Um, still has a window on the right. Has a lot, of, uh, a lot of items on it. Still got the two banners. I uh, looks like they cleaned up the windows on the left hand, I mean the right hand side, sorry, mm -hmm. um, pretty well compared to what, you, what used to be there. Oh, yeah. So, so that to me, that means they did get some notice of this. They wouldn't do that on their own if they didn't have to. Um, so, then April 28th is my next one. Oh, I can scan that one. So, that's just a long shot. Um, so I went back down to 28th, same conditions as it was on the 15th. Uh, the window on the left still has definitely more than half of it full signage. Right. Um, you know, and uh, th this side here, you know, the right side, it has all the lottery advertisements down here. Uh -huh. um, those are regulations. There's nothing prohibiting those. So as long as it's less than one quarter, they're fine. Um, I think. I think that might be changing our zoning rewrite, but those lottery things that we have to talk about. We do get complaints about those. Um, and then April 20th. What's your complaint about the lottery things? I don't know. I can tell you, we get complaints that they look like a mess. They look terrible. They're, you know, there's other things that people say and some of the complaints I probably wouldn't want to repeat here. Okay. So, um, then we get them. Uh, and so on the 20th, wash, rinse, and repeat, same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, May 10th, now I went out there after the email there, and I called uh, the operator, uh, Sunday, 
And I went out there after I explained it to them. And now that window, the windows are a lot better. But the problem is they still have the two banners up here. Okay. So I chatted with him on the 10th. Right. And I said, look, these got to come down. And he's, his quote to me was, those were there when I took over. So he's like, I have to get on a ladder, I have to get tools, and he actually, they're actually screwed into the. So I said, all right, well, look, I'll put you on for the hearing. I'll be generous. I'm not going to recommend a fine. You made effort to get the rest of your windows cleared off. So I was, seeing if we already did it for number 93 in New Canaan, bumped it to the ninth. So the same thing for this one. I, I believe he will do it. He was very forthright with everything. And he's going to be, as a final note, because he does sell liquor there, he sells beer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to allow him to put something where the register, the register right, right. is right here, which is where people park. So, yeah. I, I, but I also told him in the, the package store as well, the, the niche in the regulation, the, it, as long as it's not advertising, you can cover your whole window. Uh, so if it's just, for example, if it's just a color, if it's just, you just put up a black drape, you can cover your whole window. So would be very good for business. No, that's why. Yeah, but I said, so if you want, I told this guy if you wanted to put a, you know, like a little mini curtain or something here, that's fine. Whatever he had to do. Right, so he knows what he has to do. He knows what he has to do. So it's fair to give him a little time to, to do it, just and to make sure again because somebody will follow up on this. So and they are following up on this. Violation is mostly pure. Mostly pure. Not sure if this one is fine. The knife. I with two banners. To remove the two banners? Yeah. Should have done by then. I told them for some inexplicable reason that it can't be done for some. Yeah, let, me <laughs> let me know. Let me know. To let it ride. Not even going to put a contingency file into that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on this one. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's fine. He comes in and then they move the banners and then have a good excuse. That's not his plan. Yeah. It's not much money in the fine yet anyway. Right. That's why yeah. I didn't want to use that three hundred dollars because that's that's scary right. enough. Right. And you get big a contingent out that far because it right. will accumulate to a thousand by that. Right. Put this six nine. That was also six minus one. All right. So um as much as I hate to do this, um because I think and I hate to admit it on, on the record. I think I got bamboozled a little bit here. Um, you know what? Let's go and we will, I'm going to take a really quick look here. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause for 10 seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're on to our last item of the day, seven thistle. Uh, so we'll go to the share screen. I'm kind of excited about this one. I need to get a life, I think. Let's see. All right. So, seventh thistle. Oh, I'm hearing also with the uh, memo and his previous decision form. And while I was reading the memo, I will go over the previous decision form for the members of the public at home. So, last time we were here was March 24th, 2021. At the time, uh the violation there's no fine at this at the time uh need in hand service for uh the next hearing which was 42821 and well for, we canceled that hearing okay and it was, everything got bumped to today okay so let me go there again. We'll do, let me do my. So now, 
the property owner, and here's where I'm going to deviate from my usual uh, share screen here, just so I can get it on the record, that the decision form that we had from last hearing was sent to the owner of record. Now, he got that in the mail, mm -hmm. and he contacted me via email regarding receipt of that. So what I want to do is I'm going to put it in front of the camera because I don't have it on the presentation. This is the response email. And I know nobody at home can read this, but this is a part of our record. So if anybody wishes to see this email, they can feel free to request it from the planning and zoning office or myself. So basically this was an email stating, like I said, that they got the decision form and Basically, I informed him in that email of our rescheduled meeting on May 12th at 3 p.m. His response was, I will be there. So I am taking that that he knows of today's hearing. Yeah. So that is why I feel confident I can continue with this matter, even though he is not present. Yeah. Very good. And so I'll go back to the share screen because as far as I'm concerned, this is a very easy um, presentation. The violation is for a food service truck. Where did this complaint start from? Oh, this started from all the way back. And this, ladies and gentlemen, also is available in the file as part of my initial presentation done back in March. This was from a citizen all the way back in February of 2020. Unfortunately, he presented that right before COVID hit, before we got going with anything. Okay. This is about a taco truck. Yeah, it was a, uh, it's a, it's a taco truck. We look at that as a food service vehicle, right. obviously. Um, and those are considered commercial vehicles. Yeah if they are over a one ton rated capacity. I had been told by the property owner in previous phone conversations mm. that the truck is not a one ton rated capacity. I simply asked for, you show that to me and the violation goes away. Because I can't look up the, I don't know what type of truck that is. That's gotta be on the owner or the mm. operator to provide me. Even, even if I had to look it up, I don't know what the make and model is year of that is. So I like it's an ugly taco truck. So. And that's the, I guess that's the eye of the beholder. <laughs> right, I think it's really nice. I think it's a nice truck as well. I don't know why it just looks like a taco truck. Yeah. That's something that I would, I would walk up to. Right. Um, that's just funny. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the uh, main that folks would complain about. Uh, so anyway, this has been, uh, this went, this got a little contentious with us and the owner. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to go on and do my presentation okay. to show that um, you know, this is April 9th, which was after our hearing on, in March. Truck is still there. So I've seen this before. Yes, this has been in front of us once before. Okay. In March. Yeah. Continue to it. Okay. Yep. And then May 4th looks like it was. I always was since February 20th, maybe a slightly different location in the driveway. Okay. So uh, this is fairly simple. Um, I'm at this point, I am, he said he was going to be here um, up until, uh, I'll be honest, I don't check my voicemail after one o'clock to before I set up for this hearing. So unless he called between one and three o'clock today to say he wasn't coming, I was expecting him via that email. Can you check your, your voicemail? I can go check. Just to yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I will, be, I will be right back.
So I will speak on the record yet once again. Uh, the last phone call I received from the owner, Mr. Powers, was on April 28th. And as you can tell, email correspondence was in May. Okay. So that was the last attempt that I have on record in my phone for communication. Okay. So now I've got something I can write down. So this has been going on for, for my attention was March 24th, the first time I March. Yeah, March 24th was the first time it was in front of you. The citation was issued on March 10th. Okay, yeah, that's and right. we can legally find maximum fine would be back to March 15th. And that's the total you see on the bottom of the page. So I have March. That's six weeks and right. no progress. Okay, so it's time to time to start pushing some progress. Okay. I need a, uh, oh, did you just, oh, it's over here. I took it out because I was like it was getting mixed up, and I'm like, oh, well, let me put it over here for now. Well, let's put everything in order here. Yeah, so let's just how you want to. I got that. These are just my two pictures. Okay, I don't need anything. Yeah, that's anything else. Okay. So let's that. He said he was coming the owner or the the uh, the owner according to this email, the owner okay. said the he, owner. he will be here in person. Bill Powers. Owner did not show. You want to reference the email too? Wait. Uh, let the record reflect that the owner sent an email that he will be here in person. The time is now five o'clock and he has not shown. We're going to proceed without him. I looked at the record uh, for violation, continues unabated. Nothing else was done. Fine. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to give him $500 to get this. Uh, Five hundred dollars ordered contingent fine. Uh, I'll do another thousand dollars. I'll just keep going. Thousand right, yeah, yeah. dollars. Uh, if no progress by next hearing, would you like to make a notation that progress could be a removal of the truck or proof of? Uh, no, I, 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 I know progress when I say it. Uh, next hearing is when? Uh, we have a choice of the 9th or the 16th, the 9th or the 23rd. That's how far out. That's exactly, that's a little less than a month. A little less than four weeks. How busy are we on that way? Uh, right now we got four items. Okay, next hearing, 6, 9, 21. Need notice. I've already assessed. I was in contingent. Six, nine, twenty. All right. So I just this one back to one over here. I got the other over there. Put it all out there. I'll leave that. Thank you. Here, the last minute, I'm going to read the threat again. Oh, yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> Maybe actually be true, so what? Hmm, exactly. Uh, right, and I think. If my math is correct, that is the last item of the day. Well, I seem to have checked everything else. Okay, yeah, and I have no more files here, so that's a good sign. Uh, <laughs> so we will call it a day. Our next hearing will be May 19th, and uh, we will see everybody then. Let's check my calendar.